Are you obsessed with Los Angeles? Head over heels in love with the City of Angels? Well, this is the podcast for you. At LifeX LA, we hack the best in arts, eats, and activities in Los Angeles. So join us and become an LA hacker. Baby, baby. What's up, guys? In this episode, we're going to be hacking the most famous zip code in the world, 90210. That's right, the glamorous Beverly Hills. But as our special guest is going to explain today, there's a lot more to Beverly Hills than just all the glitz and glamour that you hear about in the media. Her name is Natalia Saffron, and she's a singer, songwriter, and an actress, and she also loves and lives in Beverly Hills for many years. So if you want to learn all about this famous city, Stay tuned for this episode as we hack Beverly Hills with Natalia Safran. Hey, what's going on, LA Hackers? Welcome to another episode of the Life Hacks LA podcast. Got a very special guest on today. Her name is Natalia Safran, and she's going to be talking about Beverly Hills with us. How are you doing today, Natalia? I'm great. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Am I pronouncing that right, Natalia? Yeah, that's right. It's Natalia Safran. Natalia Safran. Cool. So, like I said, we're going to talk about Beverly Hills, but before we do that, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from originally, and how did you come to Los Angeles, Beverly Hills? <laughs> I'm a singer-songwriter, born and raised in uh, Poland in a gorgeous city of Poznan. Um, I have a band with my brother, Mick Jaroszek, uh, called The Forevers, and we write, record, instrumentalize, arrange, and produce everything together. So our sound is, is 100% us, it's authentic, and it's, uh, you know, it's kind of made independently in the best sense of the word. Um, I am also um, sometimes an actress and a film producer, so I just kind of dabble in all sorts of creative things. Um, and my path to Los Angeles, I mean, it's pretty long and circuitous one because, um, you know, I was born far away from here, never had any family in America or anything. Um, so I think it probably must have been my love of movies from the earliest days. I would watch the old Hollywood classics in particular. Um, and it just kind of uh, embedded this Hollywood myth in my head where I imagined Los Angeles was where I was meant to live. Uh, and in the meantime, I went through some other locations. So I, I went from Poland to Paris to, to model and I, I kind of strutted the, all the big runways and then that took me to, you know, Munich and Hamburg and London and New York. Um, I even had a short stint in, in, in Dallas. And then finally, I made my way to Los Angeles and, you know, all those high expectations I've had of this place being it. Um, well, they're all right. Yeah, I, absolutely. I do find this city I sound like a commercial for LA usually. But I <laughs> You're just, on the right podcast. <laughs> fucking good. I love LA. I just love LA. Well, let, and, let me ask you, what did you think about Hollywood when you first came? Because, you know, people kind of confuse Hollywood, the dream of what you were talking about, and the city of Hollywood, and they're two totally different things, right? My, absolutely. Well, I mean, yes, if you're asking that question, you sort of have to specify and, and, and ask me, are you talking about Hollywood, the Walk of Fame and the geographical location or Hollywood, the industry? Because they are two totally different things. Yeah, because, you know, people sometimes they tell me um, that they've, they've, they go to when they went to Hollywood the first time, they actually went to Hollywood Boulevard. And they're like, where are all the movie stars? You know, <laughs> they see like right. a guy dressed up like Spider-Man, a guy like sleeping on the street. You know, so. Well, you know, and, and, and by the Hollywood Boulevard, I have a soft spot for that place in my heart as well. Because for me, Hollywood Boulevard is not the crazy, you know, the, the, the SpongeBob, SquarePants, you know, mannequin, whatever. And then the guys who pretend they're Transformers or whatever. It's the, it's the old Grandma's Chinese theater uh, where Gary Cooper's footprints are, are you know, planted right next to Clark Gables, right next to Rita Hayworth. That's for me, the beautiful old legend of Hollywood that really happened and whose myth endures to this day. And when you walk it, you can feel it. It was all there, the big premieres, the Oscars and all that. And then the rest of it around it has gotten kind of, how would I put it, wilder with, with years as they passed, you know? I mean, it definitely has its kind of, wicked flavor with all the people milling about and all the tourists and it can be a little trashy and it can sometimes be a little iffy but you know in general it's a giant iconic place where thousands upon thousands of people flock to every day of course it's going to be a little unruly 
um, you know, and it's had its ups and downs through history, through the years, but it's very entertaining. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't really dislike it. I'm not scared of it. I think it's great. It's not maybe where I want to hang out every day, but whenever we have a movie premiere, like for instance, uh, Aquaman, um, the movie I was not got to premiere uh, at the Chinese theater, and it was the biggest thrill to get out of the limo and walk down the, well, it wasn't a red carpet, it was a blue carpet because it was Aquaman, it was, you know, ocean themed. But to walk, looking around and seeing the same buildings that all my favorite movie stars saw when they got out of the car back in the 30s and 40s and 50s and so, it was a thrill that is very difficult to put into words. And that history is, is still there. It's very much alive. We keep it all alive when we go visit and when we make great movies. And yeah, I just, I, I really think it's, it's an incredible place. Yeah, you, I mean, you have to adjust your expectations when you go to any crazy tourist destination. And you have to also understand that um, no city is just one street alone or one center. And, you know, you need to kind of prepare yourself better and research a lot before you come over as a tourist to a, to a town, whether it's a city or a village or whatever it is. You need to kind of try to grasp what it is and how many things it is before you get there and yeah. you judge it and feel if you feel comfortable there. You know, and, and Los Angeles is very specific. You can like it or dislike it. I think you've got to like it if you live here. It doesn't have a center the way you're used to with European cities. For instance, my hometown has a beautiful center from the ninth century. And then everything spans from that. LA has all these different centers and all these different incredible townships within it and big, na powerful neighborhoods that have their own flavors. So how can you not like LA? If you don't like downtown, you go to, you know, to Westwood. You don't like Westwood, you go to Korea. There's so many places to find yourself in. Yeah, you know, that's very, things? that's, that's very true. And I think that's the reason why you have to spend time here because yeah. if you just, if you, like you'll find the right neighborhood that fits your personality if you spend enough time here. But like you, to your point, you know, downtown is going to be very different than Santa Monica or Beverly Hills, what we're on to talk about. So that's, that's great. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so many places here to, to just kind of tickle your fancy. You can just pick and choose and it doesn't have to be one. You could, I, I feel like I live in a lot of neighborhoods every day in LA and that makes me just so happy. I feel like I'm connected to, you know, to the city and really reaping the benefits that it has to offer, which are amazing. Yeah, you know what? Another thing that makes it feel like you're in different places is the weather, right? Because yeah. you got you basically have three different weather reports. You've got the valley, then you've got LA, and then you've got the South Bay. And this that's right. You never you're never bored here. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about Beverly Hills. So um, you currently live in Beverly Hills, right? That's right. All right. Cool. Can you tell us some of the reasons in general why you love living in Beverly Hills so much, and what are some of the things that make it such a unique place to be? Well, it's the only place I've ever lived in LA, but I, I, do, I do know LA well because, you know, I drive around and, and I work in different places all over town. But the first place I ever arrived in um, that I ever found my first home in LA was um, up Benedict Canyon, so Beverly Hills. And I mean, it just struck me with love at first sight, struck me as such incredible luck to be living in the middle of a very vibrant urban community and, and having all the benefits of that, all the you know, shops, stores, um, you know, all that busyness and, and, and people and energy. Um, while you're also in the middle of a stunning nature preserve. I mean, who gets to do that? So Benedict Canyon, I don't live far away. I still live in like sort of the Benedict Canyon uh, area. You wake up to the birds and there is, you know, there's um, deer and there's coyotes and there's all this crazy wildlife. You know, it looks beautiful. It smells beautiful. We have flowers growing year round that are just unbelievable. And I have an herb garden and a rose garden. And, and my neighbors have all these different gardens. We go on walks every day. So you have that, which is incredible. And you feel like you're surrounded by nature, but you are in the middle of a city. And then I do feel that Beverly Hills is just kind of beautifully ensconced in the center of what's going on in town. So I'm... I drive very fast. So I'm literally 22 minutes from the beach. I, I've timed it exactly. <laughs> Sometimes it can be a little bit faster, but on the slowest day, it's maybe 28 minutes to get to the sand. And then on the other side, I am, you know, two minutes from West Hollywood. Uh, I love, you know, live gigs, hard rock music, and the opera, the theater, just to get to 
West Hollywood or, you know, onto downtown. It's just, it's close to everything. It's within a reaching distance. So you cannot beat Beverly Hills for that. We also have incredibly great, you know, municipal services and um, the police department. So it feels safe and it's still a good old fashioned neighborhood where everybody, you know, watches out for everybody. And I love that. I mean, there's of course two, um, two kind of faces to that. So people imagine it's, it's Beverly Hills. It's, it's, you know, it's the stores and it's the boutiques of Rodeo Drive. I mean, that's definitely part of it, but it's also the residential area and then the hills and the parks, uh, you know, there's just so much here. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good point is that where Beverly Hills is centrally located is a, is a huge advantage. I mean, it, it, it's, 20 minutes from pretty much everything, like you said. But then when you go into Beverly Hills, it's like it's, you know, you're in Beverly Hills because the architecture is different, all that nature you're talking about. And there's nice cars everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> What's not to like? <laughs> yeah, that's part of it. So let's get into some of the stereotypes. I, I feel like, and you probably know this as well, because, um, you know, I'm not originally from Los Angeles. You're not originally from Los Angeles. So you hear a lot about people's perceptions, you know, probably your friends from back home. And I think LA in general, but especially Beverly Hills is sometimes stereotyped by outsiders as being superficial or fake. Um, what are your thoughts on that as someone who actually lives there and knows, knows firsthand? Well, I mean, I do find that people who judge a place without having ever been there are as superficial and fake are that themselves. Just that's just from the, from, the, from the top. I think that's what it is. Um, I mean, is any one place superficial and fake? I don't think so. I mean, I can only speak to my Beverly Hills, my experience of, of this particular neighborhood and this city of LA. I don't find it to be superficial and fake. There's definitely people who can be like this, but I see them all over the place, you know? So, I mean, they could be any, anywhere you travel, you have superficial and fake people and you do your best to steer clear of them. So I don't find it to be so. I mean, I definitely think there are a lot of people who are cosmetically augmented as in they really care about their outward appearance and, and they're, you know, well manicured, well healed. And there's definitely a lot of that here. But then again, you know, I see that in Paris and I see that in Warsaw in my, you know, in my homeland. So I don't know that it's all that different, you know, these days. Um, it used to be more so in the past. Like I said, because I've been a resident here for, you know, over 20 years, I find it mostly as my neighborhood and the people I know and I love. So on our street, we're good friends with at least about, you know, eight other households, but I know everyone else pretty well up and down the street. And now with the rise of that lovely app, you know, next door, we've gotten to be an even tighter knit community. And when somebody needs something and somebody's dogs run away or you need a recommendation for, I don't know, a good dry cleaner, a good nanny, whatever, people pitch in because they do feel that they belong here and it's kind of nice to help one another. Um, you know, one of my best friends lives next door who happens to be my, my daughter's uh, godmother. And we didn't know her before we actually moved, um, you know, to this house and to the street. Uh, Beverly Hills can be a, a walking neighborhood or not. I feel like it's a matter of a decision a little bit. Being from Europe, for me, it's all about walking and getting to places without being in your car. I mean, it's fine if I'm going further away, but for my daily life, I like to feel like I am walking and I'm connected to the neighborhood. Um, it, our street is not in the flats, so it's not as easy to just, you know, get out of your front door, but we do it. We, we have to pass a busy street and poof, we are, you know, among the flats. And um, I do this with my daughter and I do it with our dogs. And, you know, we walk with my husband. We go to visit our friends on foot. Um, I go shopping a bunch on foot. Uh, and then, you know, we go hiking and then we go to the parks and, uh, you know, we pass all these fabulous houses. You know, I, I live in a neighborhood that's surrounded by old, old houses that used to belong to the stars. I grew up loving and admiring. So yeah, I'm just kind of in awe of it all. I, I never get bored with it. And I think 20 years into it, it's, it's not likely to happen anytime soon. Yeah. So those houses have that history that you love, right? Oh that you're talking God, about. They do. And yeah. of course you know, there's that element of, of new people coming in who maybe don't appreciate the old houses as much. And some of them get butchered and, and twisted into new mansions. But like a good friend of mine said recently when she came to visit um, after her four day stay, she said, you know, I really expected this to be so rich and looking the same with the McMansions everywhere. And I'm, I was just shocked by 
how many different architectural styles there are. There's all these lovely bungalows. It's not just one thing. There's a lot of character here and a lot of warmth that I didn't expect. So um, yeah, there's lots of that. Yeah. So talk, speaking, speaking to that, like I, I get your point about um, what we were talking about earlier with the stereotypes and people have of LA being fake you know, they actually haven't been there because I've, I've come across that myself. People will roll their eyes when I say I'm from Los Angeles or whatever, and they'll say, oh, have you ever been there? And they're like, no. It's so, so annoying, isn't it? Yeah. How can you, I mean, talk about yeah, superficial. Exactly. So, or, or they'll make other comments about Los Angeles, but never having been there, or, you know, they just came as a tourist for a couple of days or something. Right, but, and they mostly just shopped at like the Beverly Center and they, then they didn't like that Beverly um, Hollywood Boulevard was dirty or whatever. You just roll your eyes and go, you don't, you know nothing. You, you, could, yeah. you could hate every place like this. I mean, it took me like two or three years to even really figure out what was going on in Los Angeles, you know, from living here. So you definitely can't figure it out in a week or two. There is but, so much, but, but a thing about LA and the same with Beverly Hills is that there's, there's so many people and influences from all over the world. And I find that to be wonderful and I cannot live without it as in, I couldn't live in a small town or I don't know, go back home. I love the variety, uh, the international influences there really are all walks of life here from artists to doctors to you've got soccer moms, you've got everyone. So no matter how crazy or extravagant your style is or how maybe odd the offbeat person you are, you fit in, you can find your place to fit in. Nobody's looking at you weirdly. And I do love that because that, you know, as soon as I touched, touched down here, I felt like, Oh, I, I know this place. I didn't know it from, you know, pictures, plays and the music. But I also felt like I belonged because everybody's a tourist here in a way. Everybody's sort of new here. People reinvent themselves all the time. They come to find themselves here, find their dream, make a movie a reality, or maybe they're not even in the arts. But there are, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit like New York in that sense, that it is superbly international, superbly diverse. Uh, any sort of whatever your religion, creed, income you know whatever you love to do in life and surround yourself with you're going to be fine and not different because there's a group that you will fall into and be able to surround yourself with and that's just you cannot beat that yeah it's definitely inclusive and has a lot of variety but are, are there any other common stereotypes that you hear about los angeles that aren't true or sorry beverly hills I mean, you know, people, I guess, say, you know, between the earthquakes and the, and the fires and, oh, my God, it's all disasters or you all liberals there. You know, those, those, both those things are very true. A lot of people are liberal here. Not everybody, certainly. Uh, we do have our fair share of natural disasters. But, you know, so far it is well worth it because if you're here on a daily basis, well, particularly for a person coming from Poland, Europe, I love Europe with all my heart. But you wake up here and it is always pretty much beautifully sunny. And there is a quality of light that all my uh, photographer friends from Europe remark upon every single time they're here, the quality of light, it's bright, it's airy, it's open. You wake up and you want to bounce out of bed and you want to catch an exercise class or, or a beautiful hike. And you're kind of on top of the world from the morning hour. You don't have to work up your energy through the gray day to kind of figure yourself out. I do feel that just the physical circumstance of LA between the weather and the beautiful topography, the mountains, the, the ocean and all that, you are predisposed when you're here to be in your best kind of, you know, psychological state of mind because it's LA is kind of an easy place to be happy. You know, you don't have to fight against elements. It's not adversarial like, you know, like, like Paris can be, or New York certainly can be, you can escape to your own neighborhood again, or whatever it is, your own, you know, little bungalow, wherever you're living, you look at the trees and the birds and whatever, and you can escape the busyness of the city that you can also, you know, benefit from when you're in the mood for that. But it doesn't feel like it's incessant. There's all these pockets and all these gorgeous things going on that are all nature, that are not the craziness. And so there are so many escapes, you know, here that just, you know, are amazing. Yeah, that's so true. Cause I mean, you see the craziness of all the traffic and really all you have to do is just drive up to parts of Mulholland Drive and there's yeah. really like no one there on a weekday. 
Oh, you know what? I'm glad you mentioned traffic. I can I just dispel this right here because for me, I have I have a, a bone to pick with everybody who goes. LA has this crazy traffic. Okay, <laughs> I come from a place called Poznan, which is this gorgeous old medieval town. It's about two hours from Berlin, you know, in Germany, and um, it is absolutely beautiful. But it is a traffic nightmare because it's a medieval city that was not meant for cars and families own one, two, three cars, and it just becomes. It, you know, the rush hour in my hometown and in, in all the European towns is a living nightmare because you cannot widen those roads and it's just a constant gridlock. LA has crazy traffic, I agree, if you have to be on the freeway. If you have to be on the freeway during rush hour. So now I never do that. It's very rare that I have to, you know, get on the freeway at all, little less during rush hour. And therefore, I don't really experience traffic. I don't think there's that much of it. I mean, it's within reason. We all live in modern society and, you know, people have cars and it can get busy and we're all going somewhere. Sometimes one person to a car only that obviously creates some traffic out there. But, you know, Beverly Hills doesn't get very trafficy during uh, during rush hour. Uh, and unless you're going downtown on, you know, on sunset, maybe at 8 p.m., I don't really experience traffic in this city all that much. I don't find it to be a big, a big deal. In fact, yeah, and the thing is, is um, places in Europe. Yeah, the the thing is, like you said, in your city, the, the it wasn't really designed for cars. Where Los Angeles is busy just because there's so many people, but the city was actually designed for people driving cars. You know, that's right. Exactly. You have choices. You're you're not just stuck one yeah, way. Yeah, and if you live fairly near to where you to where you live during the day, you know, as in you don't have to commute very far. And that's what I've done. I don't want to live two hours away from where I work and where I, you know, where I do fun stuff. You never have to really spend that much time in traffic and on a freeway. And if you do, I mean, there's ways to enjoy that too these days, I guess. But um, yeah, I don't find the traffic to be a major obstacle whatsoever. Yeah. Okay. So for my next question, is, um, it's a little off track here, but it's basically, I've always thought of Beverly Hills as being one of the most branded cities in America, as far as like they really have captured the brand of glamour and wealth because they're actually not, it's not the wealthiest neighborhood even in Los Angeles. I mean, of course it's up there, right. but all over the world, I mean, you're from, you're from Poland. I'm sure you heard of Beverly Hills when you were Yes, in. absolutely. And I heard of Beverly Hills. I didn't grow up here. So I was wondering if you could just talk about the, the, the branding of Beverly Hills as a city, like how is it able to well, for, I mean, portray for itself all, as being the, like, the place for glamour and wealth and lust. Right. Even in America. Well, I think it's, first of all, it's um, you know, it's it's it is a it's a true city, right? So it's um, it is its own town within a city, uh, where other places are mostly neighborhoods here. So Beverly Hills is a city of Beverly Hills, and I think the beginning of it, it must be, you know, it must be all the celebrities of of all the big mega movie stars, you know, in the beginning of classic Hollywood that all lived, I mean, they really all lived here. There were only so many places to live in town. And this was, you know, one of the most fabulous ones. They built the Beverly Hills Hotel. I have this old book that shows you what this used to be. Beverly Hills used to literally be fields where people rode horses uh, and they would, you know, pony up to the Beverly Hills Hotel, uh, tie them onto the post and go inside to eat. So, it has that it has that side of it from back in the day, and uh, you know people would watch the, the the what's it called you know when old Hollywood they used to have those reels of movie stars getting together and they all hang out together and you know that that just sounded amazing I think you know this pick fair with Douglas Fairbanks and Mary. Um, Pickford, who they hosted all these fabulous parties and post Oscars and what have you. And I think people just kept hearing Beverly Hills, Beverly Hills. And that just kind of was, you know, the beginning of the brand. And then I do think that that show Beverly Hills 90210 has much to do <laughs> yeah. with the perception of that. I mean, I will often, you know, spell out my address to somebody. And the moment I say Beverly Hills 90210, wherever it is in the world that I'm, you know, speaking with, people crack up like oh my god for real there's a real place like this that definitely made the zip code famous yes i think it did and uh you know and well, listen let's not be modest here beverly hills is pretty fabulous it's you know it's a wonderful place it's it's got a, a lot of glamour i mean it's it's you know it's got all the posh stores and that fabulous street rodeo drive i mean that's one of the most famous streets in the world um, you know you've got all the fabulous restaurants and you know things going on so i guess that's that's it but i mean First and foremost, it's a place where people live and call home. 
And if you expect that you're going to arrive in Beverly Hills and it's going to be just glitz, glamour and paparazzis, you would probably be, um, well, you'd be surprised to discover that it's really just, uh, you know, a real town. And of course, there's loads of paparazzis if they're trailing a, you know, a starlet or, a, or an actress or somebody or a celebrity. But, you know, it's a place of business and it's a place where families live and raise their kids and people walking their dogs in the street. And yeah, it's, it's very much, an, a, you know, a normal neighborhood, but, you know, on a beautiful side. And, you know, it's, I guess a lot of people are affluent here, but definitely not everybody. Um, and it's also a lot of, you know, kind of older Hollywood folks still living around here, which I just find, you know, exciting. And, and uh, still a whole bunch of those old, Spanish hacienda houses, style houses left here that, you know, there's one around the corner that Ingrid Bergman lived and Buster Keaton and, you know, so on and so forth. There's just so many of them. So yeah, this is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So you really know the history of those houses, don't you? You're gonna have to let me borrow that book you've got. Oh, you got it. You, I mean, it's, it's just fascinating that they really were here. I mean, you know, I, I really grew up on, on old movies, on all movies, but I grew up on old movies in particular. And it felt like it would be so exciting to be here where, you know, so many creative people lived who had passion for the craft and, and, you know, the, really the trailblazers for what movie making is today. And also there was a lot of those movies that I loved were, you know, I love my singing in the rain. I love my Mr. Deeds goes to town. And there was a lot of happiness and energy, you know, contained within. And it's just, you know, things were beautiful and they were romantic and people knew how to dance and sing and tap. And it was unbelievable. And they were all, you know, they're all in this area for the most part. So yeah, it never, never ceases to excite and, and astonish me. Yeah. So you've given us some great reasons to love Beverly Hills, but can we be a little more specific on like what the perfect day for you is? If you had the day off and you imagine your dream day in Los Angeles from getting to bed to going, uh, or sorry, from getting up to going to bed, what would that dream day be? Oh, that's a good, that's a fun question. Oh my God. Okay. I know there's a lot to choose from. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't have to do any work at all, which that never happens. But okay, let's let's be completely hypothetical here. Your cell phone's um, being fixed or something. Yeah, well, I mean, I would start. I would just start with breakfast in my garden because that's my favorite thing. And and honestly, Beverly Hills, if you're a resident here, birds are crazy. They're everywhere, and we also have a huge population of monarch butterflies. So we grow these milkweeds in our in our herb garden, and they're butterflies constantly milling about. It's kind of amazing. Uh, and this is one of the few areas in the world where they actually come to, you know, to hatch in the certain times of the year. So it is quite fabulous. And it's also pretty quiet. So you're in town, but you feel like it's quiet. So having a, a little breakfast in my garden would be fantastic. Then I would take uh, both my dogs. We just, uh, we just adopted this giant, beautiful uh, mastiff. So that and we have a little chihuahua mix, two adopted little babes. And I would take them um, to a hike. I love tree people. You pass all these people, lots of friends and everybody walking with their dogs and kids and such um, up and down tree people. Or maybe Franklin Canyon, which is another gorgeous place that is a, a nature reserve that when you drive to, you forget where you are. It is so beautiful and kind of woodsy and it's got a beautiful water reservoir that looks like a lake with wild ducks and everything. And um, a pretty little pond with ducks and geese and turtles. So we love going to either one of those. Um, then I would take a lunch uh, at the Waldorf Astoria on the rooftop. Have you been there yet? No, I haven't been there. It has the most sweeping views maybe in town. It's, it's a fairly new hotel. Um, and the restaurant is uh, Jean-Georges Von Director. So the food is phenomenal while you get to look at a dizzying sight of all of the town spread beneath. It, did, it was, it's a rooftop or um but did you say it was a rooftop or yes this this one i would I, yeah for lunch i would go to the rooftop the restaurant downstairs is also fabulous and oh, okay it serves a great breakfast but the rooftop restaurant has just i mean mind-blowing views mm. and and on a clear day you, you really can can see forever you know um then okay so what else would i do i mean you know what if it's my fantasy day can i just can i just go shopping please <laughs> you can do it <laughs> because i never do it i never have the time but i love my neiman marcus i first came to neiman marcus with oscar de la renta when i was modeling one of his shows and happened to be in town at the neiman marcus store 
And it's just a fabulous, beautiful store. I love my Neiman's and I love Saks. And I usually go to Neiman's just to sneak a matcha latte upstairs at the vegetarian restaurant on the third floor. Uh, you know, as I, as I pick up my daughter from school, we sometimes stop for a quick matcha latte and then on to home or wherever we're going next. But if I could have my fantasy date, I would stop there and I would just shop and get my matcha latte. So that would be pretty fabulous. And then uh, I would take in a little culture maybe. Uh, there is a place that not everybody knows about. And it is honestly, if you love art and culture, the most astonishing place. It's the, um, we um, it's the Wiseman Foundation. Mm. Um, and it is a private residence that houses some of the most incredible body of work of all these international artists. You just cannot imagine how much is in there. Uh, and it's old art and it's impressionists and it's modern art, some of the biggest names ever, some of the most famous works of art. Mm, you can tell uh, that you're passing this fabulous house. It, it sort of looks incognito on the outside, but there's a Botero and a Rodin right in the garden on the outside. There's a Rodin outside and Botero right inside um, you know, the, the, the gate. And this place does not disappoint. It's, it's unbelievable. You have to call it in a couple of days beforehand, but uh, it's free access. They just monitor the amount of people that are allowed to you know, go in every day. So it's a very privately led tour by a docent who, um, there's like a few people who work there uh, to do that. They're very knowledgeable about what is inside. And um, it, it's, hold on, did I say the right? It's a, yeah, Wiseman Foundation. It's, it's unbelievable. So I've been there numerous times because I take everybody from out of town in there and everybody's jaws just drop to the floor. Wow, that sounds amazing. I've read about that, but I've never been there. Yeah, it's a great place. It's a great place. And it's like they've acquired actually property next door to so it's, it's really two properties on Carrollwood that are just, that's, that are a must, whether you're a tourist, a newcomer, or you live in LA. If you haven't been yet, just rush. You have to do this. Um, then I would probably, I'd be peckish again after the, after, after the touring the, the museum there. I would probably want to have a few girlfriends over uh, for tea and cakes at La Durée. So La Durée um, used to be my favorite place in Paris, um, this gorgeous, um, you know, patisserie, just absolutely beautiful. And they managed to transplant it, or I guess um, recreate it here on Beverly Drive with the same beautiful level of artistry in making of the pastries and the tea, particularly the black tea with violet. I could just live there. It's so amazing. It's pretty, it's happy. It's a little more of a modern version here uh, on Beverly Drive, but it's every bit as delicious. Their macaroons are amazing, but it's also all the pastries are beautiful and everything is pearlized and pink and lavender. And it's just, it's stunning. It makes you so happy to be there. So I would, you know, I, I would love to do that. Um, I love taking a picnic at the UCLA Sculpture Garden, but I don't think I could fit it all in one day. So this is um, fantasy. Remember, you don't have this. <laughs> just a fantasy. Phone. You could do everything. <laughs> well, then, I would, then I would pack a, a little tiny um, picnic basket over at Wally's and hop on over to the UCLA <laughs> Sculpture Garden. It's on the outskirts of Beverly Hills, so I will count it here. But also, not not many people know of that place. And uh, I is, haven't heard, I haven't heard of that. So is that on the UCLA campus? It's or? sort of yeah, but it's it's it, yes, it is. But it feels like it's on the outside of it, just kind of you know like within Westwood, Beverly Hills, whatever. And you've got all your Rodins and and all the fat Calderes and everything is there. People don't know about this, but it's quite quiet, and ah, it's beautiful. And it's like you know like like picnicking in the park, except for you're surrounded by some of the most amazing you know works of art. So that that's a really good one. Um, you know, there's also Paley Center for the Arts. There's so many little things to visit and see. There's the Annenberg Space for Photography. That is marvelous uh, that I would suggest, you know, visiting. If I could have the day be twice as long, I would get to all those places because I pass <laughs> them every day and promise myself I will go in and revisit and I never have time. So since we're being totally fantastical, I would, I would fit all that in. Well, um, what's a good place for cocktails? Like I used to go, Nix isn't open anymore, is it? I used to go no, there. No, I don't. I don't. I, yeah, I think it's closed. I think that's that. For cocktails, I mean, I am, I'm a restaurant person. I'm not a strictly bar person. So for cocktails, I would go, I love the Peninsula. I love L'Hermitage. And I love the region Beverly Wilshire. Hmm. I like the Four Seasons for cocktails too, frankly. So I guess I just named all of the hotels. 
Yeah, because I, I yeah because the montage my, is another one that's pretty good. To have yeah, I love my lush plush hotels. I I love the atmosphere. People really deck out. They go in for a serious cocktail. I probably would do that. You know, uh, for a real for a real cocktail, I would definitely clock in a play at the Annenberg Theater. We go loads, and it's fantastic because you know that used to when I first moved to town. That was the old library. Uh, no, I'm sorry, the old post office. So that, that's the, one of the oldest buildings in Beverly Hills. And Beverly Hills is not that old by European standards, but by American standards, it's pretty old. <laughs> so it's a cool old library that's uh, 100 years old. And it's stood there kind of empty for a long time. And then the Annenbergs, you know, created, helped create this, this beautiful theater center. And from concerts to dance performances to plays, the last thing we saw there was Long Day's Journey into Night with uh, Jeremy Irons. So, I mean, it's pretty awesome. Wow. Uh, from after the play, and it's really pretty, and it's got a great um, little little kind of a congregation center in there too. From after the play, I would walk straight to Ibaldi for a big dinner. That's my favorite restaurant in town, but maybe in LA. Uh, Ibaldi is Italian uh, Italian food in a very intimate atmosphere. Um, you know, it's not too many tourists. Um, if there's a star in there, there's lots sometimes. Nobody's gawking. The food is oh, spectacular. It is absolutely fantastic. And if it's truffle season, oh my God, it's just mind boggling. So that is one of my favorite places. And then to finish the night off, I would go because, you know, I'm being in my fantasy very, 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 um, very greedy here. <laughs> I would, I would shoot up to uh, Vibrato, which is the, um, um, Herb Albert's Bar and Grill uh, up on top of Beverly Glen. Mm. And it is an, an unbelievable place that brings live jazz and just kind of swing music, jazz music, anything that's based on a, a good quartet or bigger with some of the best musicians in the world. So my favorite is, I think, Wednesday night usually when uh, Brenna Whitaker with her little big band performs. That woman will take your breath away. She sings like nobody else. One of the best voices I've ever heard. And the atmosphere is always, you know, gay and jolly and everybody's listening to live music uh, in the best kind of old fashioned sense of the word, you know, where it's really all just, um, you know, you've got the, the brass section and, and people are playing and they really know how to use their instruments and uh, they really know how to sing. And, you know, I think the last time I saw her there, um, John Mayer popped up on stage and just like did a number with her because it was really fun and he was inspired. And it is an amazing place. So yeah, you're going to support your local spots. And if they're as exciting as the ones we've got here, then it really is not difficult at all. Yeah. Wow. As far as listing off places I've never heard before, I think you set a new record. <laughs> so I'm so happy to hear that. That's yeah, because there's a bunch of those I hadn't heard of. And I research this stuff all the time, so I'm really and excited. All, about and all fun, I promise. These are all really good places. And you know what? Mm. If you're living in L in Beverly Hills, I mean LA particularly, but Beverly Hills, we've got a great farmers market here too. So every Sunday, um, you know, we go. It's uh, it's right in front of basically UTA and along along the library on the Civic Center Drive. Great you know, farm goods, really delicious, all of it natural, a lot of it organic. It's really quite fabulous. There is yeah, I've, been, a, I've been to that farmer's market. I really liked it. Yeah, it's really good. And it's, you know, they've got like all the fresh made food. So you can also just have your breakfast there. Everybody knows everybody, you know, you know your vendors and you know how they grow their food. You just cannot really overstate how cool and important it is. All right, um, so oh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. And I was also going to say we love coffee and chocolates at Toysher. And Toysher is a little chocolatier that is still managed by the um, older gentleman who is from, I forget, Austria or Switzerland. And there's a little tiny place called Toysher. Uh, they'll make gifts for you if you need little tidbits. And they have some of the best chocolates ever. Also, um, orchid jam that this gentleman makes still himself. So it's, it's a good place. Yeah, so I was going to say, I almost feel bad about asking this next question because you just, I mean, you've already gave out so many amazing spots, but is there any like Beverly Hills hacks you can share? I, I know that um, Beverly Hills has special events every year. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's, oh, there's so many things going on here. Yeah, I mean, you guys have the art show. You have um, yeah, there's lots of art shows. Well, I mean, you know, we have this this new Esplanade that I don't know many people know about. I was out of town for for a few months this year, and so I almost missed it myself. Uh, you know, we have so many great parks here, but one of the great parks is also um, that giant swath of green grass that runs alongside Santa Monica Boulevard. Uh, you know, it passes the, the town hall and all that. Well, we just got a beautiful esplanade built there. So there's a big, long track for walking, running, or, you know, walking your dogs, walking with friends. And it very much feels like Europe, feels like you're in Paris. So that's my little Euro hack for everybody who wants a, a little taste of international or like they're back home in Paris or whatever. This is a really good one. Um, and you know the name? Does it have a name or is it? Um... Well, you know what? It's, I think it's just called the Santa Monica Park. I'm not actually sure what it's called. Yeah, I definitely but you can't miss it one. because it's, you know, that big sign that says Beverly Hills. That's on oh. Santa Monica Boulevard and what is it, Rodeo Drive? Oh, yeah, that, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that's in the middle of that esplanade. You just have to kind of walk inwards towards, um, away from like from Rodeo Drive to where the residential part starts. And it, it runs um, parallel to Santa Monica Boulevard. It's from the, that beautiful Native, Ameri Native American fountain that's on the corner of Wilshire and Santa Monica, all the way down to West Hollywood, basically. So it's a good long stretch. That's amazing. That's really fun and pretty. Yeah. You know, we have creation here now. So when it comes to hacks, that's a cool, fast breakfast or lunch that is like delicious food and you cannot, you know, you cannot um, not appreciate it because it's yummy. Um, what else? There is, uh, I wonder if I should give this one away or not. That's a really good one. There's come on, come on. There's give a place. Up. Give it up. A place here. It's called, uh, two, it's called Sample 260 or 260 Sample. Uh, it's a little place that gets great designer um, clothing brought in in sample sales. So you're in the middle of Beverly Hills, the poshest shopping area in the world, arguably, or one, definitely one of the very few like that in the world. And you can shop, you know, this year's collection of whatever it is that they're selling at the moment, they're big names and some casual things as well. But that's kind of a little known, little known secret. And it's, it's a great place where you can buy a lot of wares for not a lot of money at all. And I love, you know, it's from my days as a model, probably. I love a beautifully made garment and nothing beats couture. Um, so this has a lot of that there for prices that are not at all like what you would find in a store, you know? Wow. That's going to blow up with the females in the audience right there. Well, you know, there's a lot of male shopping in there just as well. Don't, so is it, is it seasonal there. or how do you know? No, how... they're, uh, you know, you get on a, you get on their mailing list and they'll email you because it's a different sale every week. I mean, oh, yeah, wow. fathom that it's, yeah, it's some really good stuff. So it's almost like a high level flea market. Like you never know what you're going to get, but you go there and it's like. No, no, no. Because, you know, they'll say like this week it's, you know, I don't know, frame jeans and Oscar de la Renta or whatever. Oh, okay. So they do and let you know. It's always, yeah. If it's a big name, it's just one name. And then the next week it'll be something else. It's, you know, it's, it's all kinds of things. It's, you know, it's Paul Smith or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's fabulous. Do you have to be on the list to go? No, you don't. But oh. you have to be on the list to find out what's going on there. You don't want to drive by every single day. So oh, every okay. single week. So yeah, you want to subscribe and then just go and see it. It's it's really good. Uh, also, a fabulous, uh, fabulous Greek restaurant opened not that long ago called Luca. No, it's got Estatoria Luca. Uh, it's uh, alongside Beverly Drive because there's a lot of new restaurants that are um, on that street. And it's a you know, great restaurant after great restaurant. So you can really stroll at night now and do this whole thing. But Luca is my new favorite. And I do find that if you grab a dinner before the show and you go to the Annenberg Fruits and Theater, and then you walk down to say Wally's for a great glass of wine, or you go to Il Pastaio or Luca or wherever you want, there's so many people sitting outside and chatting and you know drinking and having a good time. It really does feel like being in the old country and Beverly Hills used to not have it so much. So I am very happy that I've, you know, that I've, I'm living here through this kind of a renaissance of sorts and I get to, and I get to be here when it's this vibrant, you know, I mean, Beverly Hills is definitely developing in kind of in a, in a great right way, as is our whole city, you know, becoming such a mecca for fashion, art, um, it, you know, it's, it's really been exciting. I can feel your passion for Beverly Hills. You should start a Hacking Beverly Hills podcast. <laughs> well, I don't want to take your job away from okay, you. Don't take my job away. <laughs> no, I won't. And you know what? 
one hack I want to I wanna sell people on, it's not strictly Beverly Hills, but I just love it. It's one of my favorite things in the world is the opera. And I meet people every day who are just not aware of how great our LA opera is. It is amazing. Maestro Conlon is the artistic director of it. He also conducts most of the operas. The opera season is, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how many months it runs, but most of the time, if you check uh, the listings for what is playing, there will be something fabulous. It is incredible quality. The productions are mesmerizing. We go all the time and it's, it's such a privilege to have a beautiful opera in your city that everybody should support and go as often as they can. Yeah, that's a great point. I had the LA Phil on. As, as oh, a that's amazing too. And I had no idea. Here. I mean, I knew the LA Phil was good, but when I was oh, researching it before I had them on. It's not good It's amazing. Yeah, I didn't realize that they were like world-class uh, oh, way world. I mean, it's one of the best ones in the world and it's, and it's just celebrated its 100th anniversary. How's that? Yeah, with Gustavo Dudamel and, yeah, and, and, and the venues, the Hollywood Bowl and the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Oh, I mean, I mean, uh, that's yeah, when people are like, it's a superficial place, blah, 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 blah. You're like, do you like music? Do you like <laughs> live music? Which I live it. There's such great venues with fabulous history here. And a lot of them are on the, just on the cusp of Beverly Hills, like the Troubadour, for instance, or the Viper Room. Or the whiskey. I mean, they all remember the Doors and the Beatles. And, you know, it is amazing what we get to, you know, participate in here every day. So I hope that everybody gets out as often as they can and, and, and do it. I like living in Beverly Hills because I am a stone's throw away and literally a two-minute Uber drive to most places. And we go listen to live music all the time. Can be beat. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. You gave us so many amazing tips and, and hacks for Beverly Hills. I'm gonna have to go back and write them all down. But can we talk a little, you talked a little bit about your uh, music in the beginning um, of the interview, but um, do you want to talk a little bit about your movie career or your acting career? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I just like to do all, all sorts of creative things. So uh, we make music at all times. We're music obsessive. So, you know, we, we make a bunch of stuff and, and it's out there under the forevers. Uh, I, used to, I used to publish music under just my name, Natalia Safran, but it is the forevers now. It's kind of a name of the project for me and Mick. Uh, and we put, you know, fresh music out. Like we have a new EP out now called Frederic The Mixes. It's our original song, Frederic. And um, a bunch of remixes done by this eclectic mix of, of fabulous, iconic European DJs. That's really fun. Please go check it out, whoever is in the mood. Uh, and we, we put a lot of um, songs and movies as well. And, and we get, you know, commissioned sometimes to write original stuff for movies, for instance. And then whenever, whenever I can, um, you know, I love, I love acting. So I will do that as well. My last project, um, I, play, I got to play a very evil character the bride, the bloody bride in Annabelle Comes Home Ooh. from the Conjuring universe. So that was incredible fun. I've never played a baddie before. And here I got to be a bloody baddie who was like the ultimate nightmare bridezilla. Really, really fun. Uh, and just before that, um, I got to be the queen of the fisherman kingdom in Aquaman. So two totally different parts, but both required a lot of work and uh, you know some prosthetics and uh, a lot of hair and makeup and they were just so much fun that's amazing so th the best place to keep up with you because you've got so much going on is is it uh, like instagram your name uh, you know what yeah i'm an instagram girl i have to say okay. i don't have much time to to spend on social media because either you social media or you live and, and work and get to do stuff so I just do one thing. It posts automatically to Facebook, but I'm really an Instagram girl and I'm just on it under Natalia Safran. And also um, we are the forevers. And uh, yeah, you can track all my, you know, all my different projects and, and progresses through there. And I also have a website, nataliasafran.com, which needs an update, I think probably at this point, but yeah. And just, you know, check in and, and, our music is available on every platform that you like, from iTunes to Spotify to Pandora to SoundCloud, Beatport, whatever. Um, you know, we have a lot of original tracks, like I said, but we have a lot of electronica things and remixes. Um, Mick uh, has some Rocky tunes with his side project called Burn This Song. Um, so yeah, catch up with us, please, and, and, and take a listen. Independent artists live on you know, the audience's support. So it's super, super important and we appreciate it very much. 
Okay, everybody, check out N Natalia Safran on Instagram, and you can follow her music in the places she just said. And Natalia, I want to thank you so much for coming on. You blew my mind with all those Beverly Hills hacks. Oh, thank you so before. much. Um, I was very happy to blow your mind. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? I hope you enjoyed that episode with Natalia Safran. You know, I thought I knew Beverly Hills pretty well, but she dropped some absolute gems about that amazing city. And that's why I love having people on who not only know an L.A. subject really well, but they're also super passionate about it. And we definitely got that with, with Natalia talking about Los Angeles overall and specifically Beverly Hills. Now, I, I want to thank her again for coming on. And if you want to know more about her and her amazing career, you can follow her on the places that she mentioned in the episode. All right, so let's get to my special hack about Beverly Hills. You know, there's so many to choose from, but one we didn't talk about on the episode that's one of my favorites is visiting the Greystone Mansion. And what the Greystone Mansion is, it's, it's very cool. It's got an amazing Los Angeles Beverly Hills history. And basically, it was owned by, it was built by the, for the Doheny family, sorry, in 1928. And if you read the history about them, it's basically their a wealthy oil family and had a lot of influence in Los Angeles in the 1920s and 1910s and there's all this crazy stories that came out of that mansion there was a murder mystery that happened and uh, just all this intrigue but regardless of all that it's now owned by the city of Beverly Hills and so they offer these free tours you can actually you don't even need to get set up with a guide you basically just show up during their open hours which it's open almost every day I think and you can just kind of walk around this amazing, beautiful mansion that's overlooking Beverly Hills. And like I said, has all this uh, incredible LA history. And they also have these really cool special events on there that are usually ticketed. But keep an eye out, eye out for that. So that's my special hack for this week. It's Greystone Mansion in Beverly Hills. All right, that's all I got for this episode. And as always, if you want more of LA's best hacks, you can go to lifehacksla.com forward slash 10 hacks. See you next week.